Okay. Um, hey, Jimmy, you might be kind of far, but if you guys could all take a picture of this with your phones, if you had to come up closer, come up closer. I don't mind at all. I want you to have, um, I want you to have the exact wording of this. Um, it's a, it's one, of, one of my favorite uh, long-term listing techniques. It's gone. Oh, sorry. What did I do? There it is. There you go. Can you get out of the way here? Sorry. Um, while you're taking pictures, I just want you to have the exact wording so you can follow along with the instruction and not have to be writing all these words down. Yeah, here, you got, if you have to come closer, feel free. I don't mind at all. Um, how's, how's the, is the glare? It should be okay with the light being off there, but um, if you, you know, come closer if you want to, and I'll, and I'll tell you how this thing came about. So, years ago, I had a client who wanted a fourplex, just like this right here. I think actually the example thing says fourplex. Yeah, four in a building in that area. Um, I'm sending him properties, and he's doing his worksheets. He's doing everything I want him to do as a client. And he calls me up and he asks me, he says, so is there anything else out there? Have you ever had a client ask you, is there anything else out there? Mm -hmm. Micro-magicians? <laughs> you, you have lower back problems? <laughs> no, I oh. no, I exercised a lot this morning. Oh, okay. <laughs> Good. I ran like two miles. There you go. There was a lot of people running the boardwalk this morning. Yeah, there's tons up there. Yeah, a ton of them. So, in any case, um, uh, the answer is yes. So what have you got is this. We actually don't use the MLS a lot when it comes to investors. It's just not going to do much for us. Um, and they also, the other reality is this, uh, we don't need the MLS. It turns out we now have access and have had for some time to all the property files at the county level. New Jersey is a municipal level, but what I'm getting at is, you know how when we look at a listing online and we click on the listing itself, we can hit that link that gives us the property record for the, for the listing, mm -hmm. the county's property tax record, right? Property tax record. What that means is we have access to that directly, which we do. You can go in there directly. It's what I would do. And I would say to the computer, give me all of the fourplexes in this area. And for example, this one's a hit of 30. I have 30 fourplexes in that zip code. Um, now, before we do the language patterns, let's do the envelope first. If you could please write in your notes. The, the envelope we use is number 10 legal. Okay? If you want to write that down, number 10 legal. Always handwrite the, the receiver's address, name and address. Handwrite that, the person you're sending it to, and handwrite your return address too. Now, in New Jersey, you've actually got to put on there, you have to identify in the return address that uh, you're sending this from, from real estate. Um, California is the same way. Most states, you can put your name, you can put the street address, but you don't have to say Killer Whip. I'm pretty sure, isn't that right there on New Jersey where you got to identify? Yeah. Yes, you do. Yep. And then, uh, in any case, handwrite it all. The reason is tonight we're all going to go home and get our mail. All right, except for me. <laughs> and uh, we're going to get that, the, the, all these glossy things, and the barcode mill, the meter mill, all that junk. And what happens to all that mail? Poof. <laughs> and what about the envelopes where your name and address is handwritten? What about those? It's probably the highest open rate we can get. I've, we've tried square envelopes, different color envelopes, and fancy calligraphy writing. Turns out, number 10 legal is actually the one that stands the test of time, no matter where we go. Okay, so we crossed that hurdle. So let's say, so let's say, um, let's say, Jimmy, you, you, you did get these things in the mail. Would you be more curious about this one than you would about, yeah. So let's say we sent this to Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy opens it up and it says, Dear Jimmy, so remember that first name, so salutation is first name only, okay? I'm writing to you about your property located at 17 L. Now, if you, if you got that letter, Jimmy, and you own that property, would you, would that, uh, uh, get your attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I I got this. I received this years ago, by the way, and it worked on me too. I mean, that's why I thought I'm going to use this letter, man. It had other stuff in it, but we cut all the other stuff out. Okay. So we're going to capitalize on Jimmy's attention by using what's called a positioning statement, which is this: I'm not suggesting you sell your property if you don't want to. No. What are we actually suggesting in that statement? Oops. Sell your property. Yep. It gets even better. Whenever we start something in the negative, I'm not, this is not, he's not, she's not. What's the human brain wired to go and do? Doubt. Yep, we call it if not, then what? These are all language patterns. Have any of you ever heard of the class called the language of sales? Mm -hmm. Awesome mm -hmm. class, man. I took it with uh, Joel Rico. 
all the best marketing I've seen, whether it's mine or training programs, um, we use language patterns because they work. Okay, so we want to position Jimmy to read what's next, and we just did it. If it's not this, then what is it? Well, we first give them a statement of fact, which is this. However, inventory is tight right now, and what does that mean to somebody in terms of supply and demand when we say inventory is tight? You're good shape. Jimmy owns a fourplex inventory tight. He's like, okay, I'm going to make some bucks here. All right now, we continue that sentence with what's called a power statement, which is this. And I have clients, plural, like Mr. Matajasic in this example. Um, all right, quick, quick pause here for instruction. That actually is a real person, right, from our database. So I want you to please write this down. Last name only, and always get their permission first. Always get their permission first. Okay? Who want to buy a property for your building in this example, just like yours in your area. Now, in your opinions, what part of this power statement makes you really powerful? Just shout out what you think it is. It's the name. Yeah, it is. We've tested this. Uh, um, Greg, do you guys do uh, direct mail marketing too? Like when you're trying to, to when you're trying to turn the properties over, how do you? Yeah, they do, but not but not too much. The guy I work with has a good name for where he does it, so he's yeah. kind of out of the marketing part of it. But yeah, um, yeah, but I know guys that do that. It, it works pretty well. It does. We only found out. So we've done what's called A/B testing. You know, split testing. One with the name, one without the name. Put the name in, guys. Response rate goes up. You just use get one of your clients to agree to agree to it and use that. Yeah, I know Jeff sends, you mentioned Jeff Quinn. I know he sends yeah. like a full list of yeah. his blacks out name and sends like a full list of people that are actively searching on his website. Yep. In my particular case, uh, you know, uh, it's a group of people that are at LLC. Yeah. Well, that's another step. You can, you have to go find out, um, in most states. No, that, that, that are going to be my investors. Yeah. Okay, they're, that's they're right. going to have me. Too. Helping them, yeah, find the properties. Right. Just put the name of the LLC in there. I would use if you can get a last name. I would do that. We put well, have the managing partner. Yeah. Um, if you, in fact, if you look on, um, were, were we on a webinar doing this one night, guys? Yeah. What did we? What did you find? In in the state of Jersey. Yeah. It's tough. Yeah, you got to break it us. So yeah. you're gonna have to send it to the registered agent. And hopefully the register. Oh no no! What I'm, what I'm saying is the property. In other words, the, the LLC doesn't own the property. Yeah. The LLC Correct. is looking to buy properties yeah. from people. Oh, yeah, so you actually you actually know the. Oh, you already know the people. Yeah. 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 What exactly. happens is. Oh, so how do you, you? You can't put like. I guess you could put Dalton Real Estate Enterprises. No, because then they'll contact and direct. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Right. Yeah, I, I would. Um, the last name of the main exactly. person. I would always use the last Dalton. name. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Dalton. Dalton. Okay. Yeah. 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 We've tested it, and it's uh, you just last name. Just yeah, it makes it more real. Like we can all say we got clients, but you name somebody by last name. I mean, would you say that's a bold move? By the way, <laughs> it took cuts for me to do it first time. Like, what does it work? So I would use a last name. Um, it could even be the last name of the, of the person who registered the LLC. So when I set up my LLCs now, I set them up in Wyoming, and I pay somebody to set them up for me, a registered agent, an agent, but it has their name on there. Mm -hmm. But they know how to get a hold of me, right? right. All the mail it eventually comes to me anyways. It just goes through one address and to the next. They just, you know what I'm saying, they're already just package up, send it out. So in any case, um, uh, back to this. Uh, we've now got um, um, Jimmy's attention, right? We want to make them an offer, but before we do, we're going to do this. We're going to say, that's why I specifically sought you out. Now, multiple people get the letter, but each one's name specific, property specific. We just want Jimmy to feel like we specifically went for him, right? And then we make the offer. Even if you're just curious about what your property would sell for, please let me know. I'd be glad to give you a free evaluation. Now, if there was any fluff at all in this paragraph, yeah. man, the shorter we had, the higher the response rate went up, okay? Um, and another reason I had to take a picture is this. Is I was teaching this, actually, in, uh, where was I? I was in Baltimore. And um, I'm in a classical room with a letter, and there's a guy in the back of the room, and he said, hey, man, I got the letter. That thing only works. And I said, well, hey, I never taught in New Jersey. I mean, in Baltimore, how'd you get this? Well, his, his cousin, Terrence, was in the program, and he, he sent him an email with this letter. He said, hey, man, use this letter. 
This thing's a freaking bomb. Call it a freaking bomb. <laughs> I guess a freaking bomb is a good thing these days. <laughs> when, I, when I was a kid, we remember we heard bomb, a teacher would say, well, get under the desk, it's a drill. <laughs> they tell do drills these days anymore? I don't think they do drills anymore. In any case, God bless him. He was doing what his team leader was asking, which is get more listings. It's true. We need more listings in this business. We all do. The difference is, guys, with the owner occupant, we lead with the listing, and once an attention buyer will call you. About 30% of the time, yeah, that's the style of that. With investors, what we found out is if you want to get investor listings, you actually got to come to the race with horses in your trailer. It's better to build up your database, get some demand, get some traction, get these people in the first property, second property, get if you want that, take action to get that next property now. And because we've done the marketing that we've done, like this type of marketing, right, where we've been able to, they've actually had pre screen themselves, timing, motivation, readiness, willingness, ability. Does that put us in a much more powerful position to go out there and get ourselves some listings? It sure does. Uh, by the way, he came up after class.